You are listening to the Faces for the Future podcast, a podcast dedicated to exploring the stories of young creatives. My name is Jacob Deer. I'm a documentary photographer, publisher, and visual artist, and I'm going to be sitting down with creators to listen to their inspiration, interests, and process, hearing the lessons they have learned and how they broke out of the mold. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Faces for the Future podcast. We are on episode four, and today I am joined by a very special guest. His name is Aidan Petrie. He is a graphics designer, illustrator, uh, all-round talented artist, and at the moment, he's in Japan. So this should be a really interesting conversation, and I'm looking forward to uh, listening to how he goes about making his work. What's the time with you, like, over there? Uh, it's half ten. Oh, in the evening? Yeah, yeah, we're like nine hours ahead. We're like in the future. I see. <laughs> <laughs> I like that concept, in the future. <laughs> That's so good. Um, yeah, no, it's... um. So for everybody who's sort of listening and watching, Aiden's actually over in Japan at the moment, which took me a little yes. bit by surprise when I messaged him. <laughs> so what are you doing over in Japan? So um, I'm doing a semester abroad studying at uh, a university called Seian University. Cool. Um, it's, yeah, it's just for the one semester, and I'm still waiting to start because... Uh, the coronavirus has sort of postponed things a little bit. Yeah. It's, but it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of done that to the whole world. But that's so cool that you're over in a, over in Japan, man. Like, I've always, yeah. for me personally, I always wanted to do uh, a course in America. I'm really glad that I didn't, especially now oh. with, uh, with oh. who is the president. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's really cool to see that you you sort of gone off and... Uh, studied in another country so did you choose to go to Japan or was it kind of uh, like it was there and sort of took it uh, yeah I, we we had to make uh, three choices and then uh, like your first second and third and you would and Japan was my first and luckily I was selected um, I was it was that uh, then China, then Taiwan, and I'm very lucky that I didn't get China now. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I think you picked the best one out of those. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you're, um, so you're over in Bath Spa. Yes, cool. Bath Spa. Yeah, and that's graphics. Uh, graphics. It's, uh, it's graphic communication. Okay. So it's uh, kind of like it's it's graphic design, but it also encompasses a uh, lot of different sort of mediums like uh animation photography uh typography mm. and so on cool no that's nice man like that must be really rewarding in a way having all of the different disciplines to play with yeah yeah definitely because um i i'm a bit of I, I would call myself like a an artist over a designer and probably predominantly an illustrator and I was going to do illustration in other universities, but I felt that this course offers like me the chance to just branch out and try things I'm not comfortable with. Yeah, definitely. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been great so far. So how, um, how, how long have you been on the course? Uh, I'm on my second year, on the second semester of the second year. Cool. Yeah, nice. Yeah. I think like... I made the mistake, I suppose, I made the mistake of pigeonholing myself quite early with my studying. Um, mm. You know, don't get me wrong, photography is my passion, as you can see by all of the pictures that are behind me on the wall. But I have a lot of interest that I never realised that I had in other art disciplines, like artistic disciplines. I can't draw. I put my hands up. I drew a stick <laughs> man the other day, and that was as far as my drawing capabilities go. <laughs> but there is part of me now that's trying to find you know different ventures like i've played with film like i worked in the film industry for a little bit um and i think the fact that you've sort of gone around and decided to go down a bit more of a mixed bag which definitely shows in in the work that you make you know i've uh when i first saw your work on uh, instagram i was like holy shit this guy makes some cool stuff like and you can see you can see that it goes like you you don't 
have a very particular style of making i don't think yeah yeah i i'm still trying to find that style as to say yeah because uh i i loads of illustrators and artists i love they have like one certain style they'll stick with mm. but for me i just i can't can't stick with one thing i just keep doing all these different other styles of work where i'm like uh one minute i might be doing like a vector illustration and then i might feel like doing a painting or something and yeah I don't know. I don't. I, I don't think I'm ready to just be stuck in one position. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can totally appreciate that. And I think you, as I said, it's, it's you know that's really noticeable in the work. Um, if everyone, I, what's your Instagram? I can't remember off the top of my head. I do apologise. Uh, it's a uh, Beyond Petrie. <laughs> Beyond Petrie. I like that. That's a nice name. Make sure you guys go check Aiden's work out. Even if you're listening to this podcast at the moment, make sure you go have a look at it. It will definitely uh, inform what we get, what we're sort of talking about. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I love the the fact that you know some of it looks really sort of abstract uh, in the context of mm -hmm. it's you know it looks like it's sort of drawn by hand. And then there's other elements of your work that's very uniform as well and almost, might I say, sort of Japanese or that sort of Asian sort of style of uh, illustration. Yeah. Yeah, I well, since coming to Japan, I've gone and bought myself a uh, brush pen and I love it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like nothing I've ever used before. I'm, I'm really loving it. It's... They, they here they um, uh, do a lot of like calligraphy with brush and uh, of course of course yeah and I, I, just, I, I find it so fascinating personally I'm I've come to Japan like a proper Englishman where I don't know any Japanese <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, for the calligraphy side I can copy what I see but I don't know what it means yeah <laughs> No, I think that's part of the venture, though, isn't it? I remember my first, my first sort of photographic trip. I was, uh, in, I think it was Poland back in sort of 2015. I don't speak any Polish by any means, um, but sort of that exploration of a whole new culture was something that really sort of inspired some of the work that I was making at that time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm finding here. Um... Ignorance is bliss, mm. and mm. Uh, I'm I'm quite enjoying not knowing what's going on a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I suppose there's an element of the unknown. Yeah, that sort of plays like, plays on your mind. I suppose on uh, you know Japanese. I I live with um, uh, what was her name again? I, when I when I moved to Cheltenham to do my masters, I I lived in shared accommodation with a a, a girl called. Um, Coco that was it and she's from Tokyo and she, you know she would speak Japanese on the uh, on the phone or whatever when in the lounge and I would walk by and I'd be like I ah, there's no way I'm gonna understand that and the ignorance of that is quite interesting you know yeah it's uh I can pick up a few words but apart from that it's uh oh it's 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 crazy when I walk into a shop and constantly just smiling and saying yes nodding yes, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> i think that's the traditional sort of british tourism thing to do isn't it yeah, uh, when i was definitely. in when i was in venice uh, uh, not that long ago actually um so i'm honestly i was in venice two weeks before the pandemic started in italy uh, sorry two oh, weeks wow. uh, um yeah before i came home and then two weeks later the, the big pandemic started in venice uh, and I was like, holy shit, how did I miss that? Like, it was quite scary. Yeah. But anyways, um, yeah, same thing. Uh, you you know, the, obviously the difference being, I suppose, Venice is very touristy. So mm, a large majority of people can speak English or a very small amount yeah. of it. But it was very much a case of you, you go, mm -hmm, yes, and just nod <laughs> <laughs> to whatever it might be. And then you end up with the sense. bill. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> that is so funny, man. It's so funny. But no, it's, um, it, it's interesting that you're saying that being obviously in Japan is really informing your work a lot at the moment. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. Um, I think over here, they, they have an eye for art. 
Um, I'm here with my partner, and she uh, was another person who actually got accepted onto this Japan trip. Yeah. Um, and she's doing textiles. And the textile over here with the kimonos and everything is just, oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's, that's a whole whole new sort of uh, approach to thing. Well, not new, sorry, an old-fashioned yeah. way to uh, yeah. clothing, especially. That must be quite, that's, you know, with regards to sort of traveling with with somebody, especially Japan is quite far away. Um, yeah. It must be quite nice having somebody there who you can sort of fall back on, I suppose, in that regard. Yeah, definitely. It's, um, it, is, it is great having someone with me. She's great. Uh, we're we're finding because over here we're uh, it's not we're not in lockdown here. Mm. Um, we're in a state of emergency. Okay. But apparently Japan can't go into a lockdown because I think they like to work and they like to get people to work. Yeah. That's... So uh, we can still go out and we can still explore. And um, I found a really cool place. Um, it's a fishing fishing yard where there's uh, all the old boats and there's like oh, nice. lots of junk yeah. <laughs> lots of rust. and it's oh it's, it's amazing it's, a, it's i don't know why i found it my favorite place so far <laughs> i'm guessing it must be quite sort of uh peaceful where that that place i suppose yeah with the water oh it's beautiful the, I, sorry the, oh sorry no no, no I, was I, just, was gonna, I was just gonna say that <laughs> from what I can see from an outsider looking in at Japan, it seems like the cities are manic and then the countryside's very peaceful. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, the area I'm in is uh, it's just north of uh, Kyoto and it's a rural area. So it's very, very quiet. The, I, I don't know what people do here. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's quite it, that that must be a really interesting. So have you been to have you been to any major cities yet since you've been there? Yeah, um, within the first month before things got worse, we went to Tokyo and spent a week in Tokyo. Mm. And oh, it's amazing that it's yeah. it's like how, it's like a Blade Runner. It's amazing. Oh, you're <laughs> making me so jealous, man. <laughs> <laughs> Japan's one of the places I've always wanted to visit. Always wanted yeah. to go. It just seems like such an interesting country. Yeah, it really is. There's so many strange uh, culture differences here mm. that um, it's quite a shock. Because I always knew it was different, but it's, it's not really different. Yeah, not effects. quite as different as you sort of expected, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think there's an element of. Um, especially when you travel to, uh, you know, I've never been to quite as far reaching places as sort of Asia, but I suppose when you, when you travel, there's this sort of element that you feel like there'll be some familiarity. Yeah. But I suppose in, 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 in places like Japan, that that sort of is almost non-existent in some aspects. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I found, uh, I had a real, uh, craving for baked beans. <laughs> That's quite the craving. <laughs> oh, that's jokes. What's the weirdest thing you've eaten whilst you're there? They're, they're, I know that they're obviously they, oh, they eat some weird stuff. Some weird stuff over here. Yeah. Uh, they, <laughs> it's like well, there's quite a lot of weird things I could name, but I'd say we we got a hot pot at one point, and mm. it was like these sea snails, but they looked they looked like <laughs> little aliens. It was. That's I weird. was not comfortable with it. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> weird. I would probably not. Get, you know, give me a steak and some chips, and then we're sound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's quite in their diet. <laughs> so you're sort of going back to saying with your work, it sort of obviously bounces around a little bit with with style, still figuring out that sort of voice that you're finding. But there's yeah. obviously uh, quite sort of um, a skate border sort of influence i can't think of any a, a more articulate way of putting it yeah yeah, yeah. and there, there definitely is definitely um even though i was never any good at skating <laughs> <laughs> i still uh we we had a similar friendship group um back in the day yeah, and definitely um 
yeah it had a massive influence on me the the lifestyle and sort of the culture behind it mm. um and the artwork behind it definitely the the skateboard decks and stickers i i fell in love with it mm. um and like it's because it's i guess it's uh goes back to when i was a kid because like i always loved like cartoons and so then like there's sort of like the jump from cartoons because there's a lot of skateboard decks with like sort of cartoon looking characters on it and like big graphics, bright colors and stuff. It's almost sort of pop arty in some aspects. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it just, it just spoke to me and um, yeah, I, it's had a massive influence on me. Definitely. Mm. Do you still, Which is strange. do you still sort of skate a little bit now? I still have my skateboard and I've not used it in a long time. <laughs> It was weird. Actually. It's one of these things. It was it was strange actually because before obviously everything got locked down here in the UK, um, I bumped into Jake Beckett actually uh, a few weeks yeah. ago, and he was skating, and I was like, oh yeah, you're still skating. Like ev- so many other people that I know that were in that scene, whether it was BMX or skateboards or whatever it might be, we don't talk about scooters. They're not part of the <laughs> scene. They never have been. Never will be. Um, <laughs> so many people are gonna hate that comment anyways um (laughs) yeah where was i going uh yeah so it's so interesting to see like jake skating it sort of reignited a fire in me to be like actually yeah i I might pick my bike up again and start riding so once i'm once i'm a bit more healed up from back surgery i'm getting back on my bike starting riding a bit more and try and explore that but uh, you know it's it's as i as i spoke with jake on the podcast the other day about the influence of that sort of scene, that sort of alternative, which it was and still is an alternative yeah. sort of scene, is quite influential in the work that we make and it sort of shows with yourself especially. Yeah, I think uh, with the skateboarding and BMX and C, I think it's one of those things that's like, it's, it's, it's welcome into anyone. Yeah, definitely. And it's like, it's, I think the thing I love about it, it just means that like you could be any sort of weirdo, any misfit, <laughs> Yeah. And like it doesn't matter. No, and you you I, all have the same love. Yeah, exactly. And I think that comes across in the artwork that um people involved in the scene or work involved in the scene, I think that comes across as well. Mm-hmm. In like the just not needing to be uh I guess liked, sort of just doing it for themselves. Yeah, it's very self motivated. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. And yeah. I think, you know, we we all know and most people outside of that scene know the Thrasher logo. You know, it's probably yeah. one of the most iconic logos out there, I'd say. Yeah. And I think that yeah. sort of, I think that sort of shows that, you know, you can you can make without sort of worrying about what other people consider or think about the work you you kind of have to make for yourself. Yeah, exactly. There's uh, one of my biggest influences is a, a skateboarder Mark Gonzalez mm, and the, Gons. Uh, the art he creates yeah go on yeah. I, I love the work he creates and I, he's just got such an attitude where he doesn't he doesn't care if people like it he's just going to keep making it and I just I find that really really inspirational it's something I try to live by but I can't help but be like oh please like me <laughs> <laughs> I think that comes down to the digital age though man like you know, yeah. we 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 live in this age where likes and you know f- smiley face emojis are what some people fucking wake up for, and it it still blows yeah. my mind. Like, you know, yeah. I, I admit I went through a bit of a stage, you know, with the the Instagram story and all of those things, where I almost was making it for views and for people to comment on what I was doing, and then recently not that long ago about sort of two three weeks ago i sort of sat down was going through a bit of a, a rough mental patch um with every all the pressure of the lockdown and other things going on in my personal life and i thought to myself what am i doing why am i why am i trying to please however many people when in reality i'm not pleasing myself and not happy with myself and yeah. i i think i sort of lost that because of not being around the people that I needed to be around, the people that just want to be themselves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think it's it's a it's a hard time for uh, artists and creators 
because there is the social media that that sort of pressure 100%. and trying to trying to be a successful creator or whatever outside of social media is possible but it's just something that it, it is it's sort of like once in a blue moon it would happen yeah it's it's become it's become not impossible yeah, as you said not impossible but yeah, to 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 be a, a fully fledged independent artist outside of social media is it's incredibly difficult, and yeah. I think the thing with it is, you know, I I don't really know the illustration and the graphic side of things that for, that well. Um, personally, I've never dipped my toe into it and tried to make anything in that realm, but I know that in photography, you know, you have. You have the people that are creating to create, and then you have the people that are creating to pay, and yes. there's a big divide in that, I think. And yeah, it's it's a, a weird place that we live in with the the a million pictures a day or whatever it is to Instagram, and yeah. you know how can you keep up with that? How can you make you know? Because you end up just going into a rat race. You end up just trying to make work as quick as possible and putting it out to get you know a heart emoji and it's like this isn't why i got into this and fell in love with art and photography and i think i'm slowly coming to terms with that now yeah yeah it's yeah it's trying to find your way in the world isn't it trying to just be happy with yourself and the work you create and i think as long as you like it and you love it Mm. that's that's all that should matter really yeah 100 percent, and i think I think the pressure that people are feeling if you're an artist you're not an artist whatever it might be you know there's a a lot of pressure especially on younger people at the moment Um, I still classify myself as younger I turn 25 next month so we'll see how that goes Um, (laughs) because then suddenly I'm in a bracket with 30 year olds but um, (laughs) I don't know what we're going to do about the young artist thing but yeah I think when you're younger there's there's this pressure of um not success but to sort of be happy and i know that's really sounds really strange but Mm. i think there's almost this pressure to go through school get a you know get whatever job it is you want and be happy and then almost the pressure of trying to be happy ends up making you unhappy yeah yeah it's a it's a funny time we live in i think uh everyone's trying to find their way right now and uh Mm. it's hard it's hard out there i know like many people are struggling i've struggled a lot in the past and i think it's trying to like fight your way through it and learn to just try and love yourself (laughs) yeah 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 no i totally agree and i think that's the that's the thing that we we all have to try and do, I suppose, isn't it? And I think art is a great way of going about learning how to identify with yourself and how to understand yourself. Yeah, yeah. I think is you you find out a lot about yourself when you create, because yeah. uh, there's plenty of times I've made something and I've like, especially when I'm painting, I'll, I'll paint something and I think, oh, where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it can be a little bit scary sometimes yeah yeah no i agree so you know my for me my work is you know almost everything that i make whether it's for whatever the purpose a project or just to take pictures it all has a personal take on things and you know mm. I, i've said before in the past that i sort of use a lot of the demons that i've battled and uh the the mental health problems that i've had to actually confront and try and overcome these things and i think you can kind of see yourself going through a development with your work from your earlier pieces to you know the stuff that you're making at the moment Mm. yeah i think uh with me i i I love bright colors like that's something i love but at the same time i've got a big part of me that loves black and white yeah definitely and uh And it's trying to find my way through which which way I want to go. And I think it usually is just to do with what mood I'm in. Like, how I'm feeling that day. I might do something a bit brighter. Yeah. But um, for me, I don't know. I, 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 tr- I quite like uh, making sort of 
quirky, sort of like bright, almost funny little uh, illustrations that like, I don't know, like that would just, if I saw, if I think I saw it, it would make me smile and I think, yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I'm happy. Yeah, and I think that's such an a, a amazing way of making work in in the context of like making stuff to smile about. Yeah, yeah. And I think you you can see the battle the battle that you have in your work. You know, you, you one minute you're sort of doing what looks like charcoal or you know that sort of style, very sort of heavy contrasty black and white, and then the next thing is a very bright sort of what almost looks like a screen print and it's really interesting to see that contrast and that sort of back and forth that you're having with yourself as an artist yeah yeah it's 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 a day by day thing <laughs> <laughs> no i totally agree man so you're you've just started making t-shirts haven't you i think i just saw earlier today yeah well i printed my first t-shirt um ordered it online it came yesterday really happy with the results and i'm thinking uh it's i'm hoping to print some more t-shirts maybe print a couple products like uh notepads things like that nice. yeah, yeah. Uh, get some different designs on the go and then if people want it they, they can have i'm happy to sell <laughs> yeah no, definitely that honestly I, I when i saw that t-shirt earlier on your social media i was like oh shit i want one of these t-shirts man they look sick (laughs) (laughs) but yeah no it's great that you're sort of going down a a new venture i think yeah yeah i think since coming to japan and waiting for the university to start here it sort of pushed me to just get creating and get the ball moving like Mm. on my own Mm. so uh me and my partner have been doing this thing where we've got a jar full of different like themes and projects and then we'll pick one out and like try and do something for it just to keep that's us sick. going and like, keep the mind yeah, going yeah yeah that's that's so awesome i've never never thought about putting stuff like project ideas into almost a pick and mix by the sounds of things yeah yeah it's just like picking it out of the jar like I will admit we are a bit picky with it. We'll always want to be like, no, let's pick it, get it. Yeah, you have to be though, because otherwise you'll end up making something, and you'll be like, oh, why did I make that? Like, yeah. <laughs> no, that's cool that you're going down that sort of t-shirt and sort of product route. You know, I think it's one of the yeah. harder, definitely one of the harder routes to go down. But I think the challenge mm-hmm. is something that you might find really, um, what's the word, rewarding. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think um, just creating it it, it it satisfies me, but I need some more like something more stimulating and challenging. Mm. And until I've got like uni projects on the go, I need to give myself something to get stressed over. Really. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Do you find that when you when you don't have anything to do, you you you, you struggle to make, or do you create from a place of boredom? I struggle to make for sure. I I chose, I cho- like with me. I'm a I'm good at creating if I'm told what to do, sort of thing. I, I work sort of. well under a brief. Yeah. Like when I'm left to my own devices, it's just like, ah, oh, what do I do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, and I think that's what the education system's great at doing is, you know, if and when you might go and do a master's you know when i started mine it was a completely different completely different um approach to work you know on Mm. on, on an undergrad a ba which yourself is on you know you have a much more sort of structured outline of the brief that you you know you kind of have to stick to or well that's what i had and i'm sure other unis are the same but when you're um uh, doing a master's or higher even higher education that structure almost gets taken away and it's more a case of you just have to make something you figure out everything else and it teaches you quite quickly (laughs) to learn how to make off of your own back in a way and i think yeah you know you yourself has been doing this for a few years now haven't you yeah yeah um i mean i've i've always been a bit of like a drawer and a doodler Hmm. in school i uh i I doodled in every lesson but art (laughs) (laughs) But um, I mean, I went to work full time for a while, and I was take I, I was working for about four years, and then 
decided that I wanted to do something creative. I needed this like outlet. I needed something to chase. Um, and that's when I went and did a foundation and then worked my way to uni. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been, it's been a couple of years now. And I think like, I'm seeing a progression in my work. I'm seeing like myself improve. Mm. And um, it's quite, it's, it's really making me happy to see because I wasn't expecting it to be so apparent. Yeah, of course. Like, um, but yeah, it's, I'm, it's, a, it's a good pathway to go down. I'm happy I've done it, definitely. <laughs> yeah, it must be. And I think, you know, coming from sort of from Burnham as you know basically mm. everyone sort of agrees is a very sleepy town between yes. you know the winter <laughs> months from September through to about May um yes. you know and some people find inspiration in that like you know myself and uh, Jake has said in the to myself uh you know we find inspiration in that and I think for other people potentially it's harder to make when there's not much going on yeah yeah for me it it was motivating in the way that i knew i wanted to get out of burn yeah, 100%. <laughs> and um it was it was motivating me to to do whatever i could to get out to where there is more things going on more to like stimulate my brain mm. um bath isn't much of a way up <laughs> <laughs> don't worry I was, I was only in Cheltenham it's only about an hour and a half it wasn't that far away sadly <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but at least it's got like there's more people there's more things that happen and it just it it, it definitely helps me work a bit harder mm. because when you're in a sleepy place it for me it definitely makes me just feel a lot more sleepy myself <laughs> yeah definitely the motivation can be you know uh difficult to find yeah yeah definitely I find whenever I've been home from uni, I, I struggle to, to push myself to work. Mm. There's something about Burnham that's just it's, it's hard it's for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think the common term uh, that I use with people is, you know, Burnham can be rather dead sometimes, um, yeah. <laughs> which is very true. It can be, you know, and I, I'm not going to sit here and, you know, shine a light on Burnham and say that it's this great place. It, it can be hard here, but it's almost like you're you you sort of suffer in silence in a place like burnham you know because there's not a huge amount sort of going on so it's not like you can uh explore one's mind very easily and i think the really interesting thing now is you know my myself i've i've moved back here don't know for how long we'll have to see how long this lasts this time but i think people who have gone away to university or whatever it is learn their craft or learning those the skills that they have and are acquiring and then coming back we're seeing you know seeing a bit of a change and i want to try and utilize people coming back and to sort of bolster burnham for the next generation now and it's you know king alfred is obviously doing a lot and etc etc but you know being artists we have to sort of take our own progression into our own hands uh, you know and it's figuring out how to do that yeah definitely i think uh i think burnham would really benefit from something happening there where it could help younger people uh, go down these sort of pathways because uh i think unless you really want it yourself it's not really available to you. I mean, there's like Western College just close, but um, I don't know. It's not. It's not something that was sort of like drilled into me at school. That's for sure. Yeah, for sure. I know that. Like the idea of going on to be an illustrator or, or an artist, I I never even thought it was like a really a job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. And I think that's the thing is, it you know when we you know we're pretty close in age if i remember right you're actually only a, a year below me if we were going off school years which people do a lot for some reason <laughs> but we're quite close in age and i think when you know you know we were all sort of going through the school system and xyz when we were younger the inspiration wasn't necessarily there as such yeah i i, I really struggled with inspiration in school i i i didn't uh I didn't do the best I could in school, that's for sure. I, my mind was in different places. Totally. Um, yeah, um, and I, I think I just didn't get the right stimulation. I didn't connect with any sort of 
uh, teacher at the time. Mm. Um, I think uh, it's something that younger people could really benefit from, especially with with a creative subject. Mm. I think uh, being stimulated by an art teacher or whatever, it would really help a lot of people. Yeah, I think it would. It would, you know. If you're looking at sort of longevity for a, a town, especially sort of size of Burnham, it'd be a case of inspiring the next generation that then inspire the next. You know, it's it's a mm. it's a you know a snowball effect, and before you know it, you have a city like Bristol that's gone from you know not necessarily yeah. being the most artistic five ten years ago to now being an artistic hub. You know, I, I know a lot of people that move there. Myself will be moving there hopefully very soon, just for the art yeah. scene more than anything else. Um, and yeah, who who knows? And not to turn this conversation into how to change Burnham, because let's be honest, <laughs> it's not going to for a while, I don't think. But I think by having the conversation and being open and talking about it, whether it's via this podcast or whatever, and tra- trying to sort of get people to understand that there's opportunities out there outside of Burnham on Sea, um, is something that we can all do being artists musicians and whomever is, comes on this podcast i suppose but sort of going back to yourself a bit more um i think it's really interesting to see that development that you're seeing in your work now you're in japan and obviously <laughs> we can't really predict the future with everything that's going on at the moment but what's your sort yeah. of plans for the future once all of this COVID-19 sort of clears up have you got anything sort of planned maybe an exhibition zines yeah yeah so um me and my partner were planning on when we get back to Bath from Japan we're planning on putting on a exhibition based on our work and our time in Japan fantastic Um, yeah it's 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 something that we're, we're talking a lot about we we need to make some arrangements and stuff um of course but yeah, it would, it, would, it would have textile work, graphics work, maybe some collaborative work. Nice. Um, I'm hoping also to print a bunch of stickers and maybe sell some stickers. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah, that's 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 our plans for coming back, and then also obviously doing third year. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the big piece. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, um, I, I, but that. I noticed that yourself has been doing some sort of workshops as well. You did a, a tie dye workshop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In in Bath, uh, uh, shout out to Little Red uh, Coffee Shop. We we um, managed to uh, do a workshop. We were planning to do a couple, but uh, things didn't go well. But like uh, we we did a tie dye workshop where we allowed people to come for free, and then they bring whatever they want and we just show them how to tie dye whatever they brought that's sick. it was a great way to just like get a get a bit of like our names out there i guess in a way bit publicity bit of publicity bit of like marketing in a way but mm. it was more just it was nice to meet some people that just wanted to hang out really it was a good night yeah no yeah. And, uh, workshops are you know uh, an increasingly popular thing to do now yeah yeah i think it's a it's a it's a it's a nice activity to do to learn to do a craft or to just at least have a go it's it's something different to i don't know maybe going on a roller coaster or whatever (laughs) yeah no for sure man i think you know i i i can't remember the last workshop i went to i think it was probably photographic based but um there's so many different workshops popping up all over the place you know my mother was speaking to me the other day about a pottery one at the end of the year and i was like i'll tell you what i'll sign up to that i'll do pottery i'll give it a go probably will be terrible at it but hey ho you know it is what it is and i think you know for yourself is workshop something that you'd want to continue sort of going down yeah definitely i think um uh, with the tie dye thing, it was it was a good easy little start because tie dyeing is anyone can do it and it's it's pretty cheap to do. Like you just need the dye. Mm-hmm. Um, other workshops I'd be interested in putting on. I'd I'd love to do a life drawing workshop because mm-hmm. uh, when I was in foundation, that was one of the things I really enjoyed was doing life drawing, and um, nice. it's something nice. I've missed for sure. Mm-hmm. 
And I think it's something that like everyone can have fun with life drawing because you don't have to really be any good. It's just it could be just a good luck. Yeah, for sure. Mm, so I think it's something I'd definitely be interested in putting on. Uh, as for that, I, I don't know, maybe some sort of print workshop as well. I've noticed you play a lot with printing. You do, uh, is it line, Lino? Trying, yeah, trying yeah. To, I, I, printing is... Pff, <laughs> I don't know anything <laughs> about printing. I know screen printing, but that's about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I do a good few linos. Um, I've not been able to recently, but back in Bath, there's a great facility at the university. Mm. And um, yeah, lino prints are just a good load of fun. It's just carving into a bit of lino and just printing it down, seeing what happens. It's, it is really good fun. It's very sort of abstract in nature, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. There's the over here in Japan. Obviously, they are really big on woodblock printing, mm. and it's something I'm really interested to give interested to give a go while I'm here. I think like there's something really like organic about it. That's just. Would you say that's you, one of the sort of main things you want to take away from being in Japan? Yeah, yeah, that, and I think I'd I'd love to. I'm really excited for my classes. I want to see how things are taught here. Mm. Um, I'd, I'd like to see like the difference between teaching styles here in England, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm loving the temples here. Mm. There's a lot yeah, of the history. Buddhist temples. Yeah, mm. I'm really I'd love to come and I'd love to come back with <laughs> uh, vast knowledge of the Japanese language. But I don't <laughs> think <that's bad. laughs> well, you, all you can do is try, man. Pick up those little things. That's <laughs> the best place to start yeah <laughs> perfect man well look where where can everybody sort of find your stuff is it uh instagram primarily or you know please promote yourself that's what we're here to do oh. yeah um mainly instagram at beyond petrie but i don't really have any other platforms on the go yet um it's mainly instagram perfect yeah. i'll make sure it's yeah. tagged below whether it's we are watching this on instagram or on spotify or anchor it'll be in the description below but no perfect man well thank you ever so much for giving a bit of your time and talking about your work no it's been great it, it's nice to catch up as well i haven't seen yourself in a, oh god i can't even remember it must be a few years by now i remember the last time i saw it, it was at the uh, hard knock hard knocks it was match. wasn't it yeah, yeah it was the, the the one of the events i remember now yeah no, yeah. it's well. It's good to see you, man. And when you get yeah, back too. from when you get back from Japan, we'll have to make sure we uh, do this again. But we'll do it in person. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Perfect, man. Well, look, take care. Enjoy the rest of your yeah. trip, and I hope all the classes go well once you uh, once the university opens. Thank you very much. Yeah, take care of yourself, man. Thank you, man. See you very soon. <laughs> see ya. Bye. So that is it for episode four of the Faces for the Future podcast. I want to say an absolutely massive thank you to Aiden for coming on the show, sharing some really interesting knowledge and some insight into the process and the way that he works and the development that he's finding himself on. Also, I can't wait to see the work that he produces whilst over in Japan. Um, it's going to be going to be some cool stuff. So please, please, please make sure you go follow him on Instagram. Links are down below this podcast, whether that's on Spotify, Anchor or Instagram TV, you are listening or watching to this, watching to, watching this. And uh, yeah, we will be back very soon with episode five of the Faces for the Future podcast. And thank you guys for watching. I'll see you very soon.